Welcome back. This is the fifth video of our data science project series. You've come a long way. Now it's time to deploy the NBA winner prediction model. At the end, you'll have an API that can be used to develop apps utilizing the model. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Justin to Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. We'll use a framework called Fast API. As you can see on their page, it's a modern, fast, high-performance web framework for building APIs with Python. It's a relatively new framework, but it's getting more popular. Let's see how it works. Before writing the code to build the API, we need to do some prep work for it. In the previous video, we've trained this model called Model Hype to predict whether the NBA game home team wins. We need to save the model so that we can reload and reuse it when building the API. We'll use a tool called joblib. So from joblib, import, dump, and load. We can then dump the model hype to the local disk as a file called modelnba.joblib. To load this model back, we can do load of the file model nba joblib. Let's call it model saved. To test that this is the same model saved, we can calculate the same accuracy score. Let's copy this code from the previous video, change here to model saved, predict x test. There you go. It returns the same score as before when we used model hype for prediction. So after dumping, and loading this model again, model saved is the same model as model hype. Next, let's think about what we want the API to do. We want it to take two team names, the home team and the away team, then return a prediction result of which team will win the game. So we should define a function to do that in the API. The input of the function would be two variables for the two team names. Then at the end, the function should return the game result. The way I prefer to build a function is to make the code work for one example and then generalizing it for any inputs. So let's say, for example, the two inputs are team home equals Toronto Raptors and team away equals Boston Celtics. With these two inputs of team names, the function should grab the data, calculate the feature for prediction, feed it into the model, and give the prediction result. What we could do is copy and paste all the code we've used earlier and work based on that. To save us time, I already copied them, so let's paste here. Let's go through line by line to change it. So the first step is to load data. We use a league game finder with arguments to grab data from a specific date and NBA league. We can probably add arguments to filter for these two teams' data only, which would be more efficient, but I'll keep it simple without doing it. Instead, I'll make the date from a later date, say 2021, January 1st. This should be enough for our prediction, and there's less data to grab. Then this is just assigning the results of NBA games data to the data frame games, after which we filter for the necessary columns and convert the game date column. Now here should be a little different. We calculated the feature average 30 plus minus by first grouping the team name, then applying the function on the column plus minus. Then we also separate the home and away teams data and merge them together and then calculated the average 30 plus minus difference for each game. Since we now only have two teams, team home and team away, we can calculate their statistics in a more straightforward way. Let's say MSK home as games team name column equals home team, which is Toronto Raptors in our example. With this Boolean series, we can filter from games all the data for this team only. Then we can sort values by its game date column. 
and then take the tail of the last 30 rows. So this is grabbing the most recent 30 games by date for the team Toronto Raptors. Let's name this data frame Games 30 Home. Then we can call the statistic Home plus minus as Games 30 Home, the plus minus column with the mean method. So we're still getting the average recent 30 games plus minus score for the home team. Now we can copy these code and change all the home to away. This will get us the statistic for the away team away plus minus. So with this code, we can remove these few lines of code from before. Now we need to calculate the final feature, which is the average 30 plus minus diff. Let's call it just games diff now, as home plus minus, minus away plus minus. And this is a number that we'll feed in the model to make the prediction. Let's also copy the code to load the model again. So now we have the model in model saved. We'll use it to predict based on games diff. So model saved, predict, games diff. Since games diff is only one value, well the predict function needs an array-like object. We can import numpy and use a numpy array to transform this into a numpy array. We also need to make this a list before converting it to an array. It returns a result as a NumPy array as well. But we would only want this value of zero inside. So we can filter for its first element with index zero. As you may recall, we set the home team result as a target. So a value of zero is saying the home team would lose. So the Toronto Raptors would lose. What's the chance of that happening? We can also do model saved predict Praba on the same feature. This returns an array of lists of lists. Since the prediction result is zero, the home team loses. The probability of it happening is this number here, 50%. If we want the probability of the home team winning, which is this number, 49.95%, we can filter for the first index, which is an array of lists then filter for its index 1, which returns this probability of when the home team wins. Now let's assign these results to variables. Say the predict result as a variable of predict home win. So when it's 1, it's a home team win. And this home team win probability as a variable predict winning probability. And that's it. We've successfully set up the process. With two input variables, the code returns the prediction results of where the home team wins and its winning probability. To make this a function, let's paste these code into one cell. We can add at the beginning def function predict games with two inputs, team home, team away, and then a colon. Then we'll select these code to indent them with the tab key. At the end, we'll add return predict home win and predict winning probability. Now let's try running it. Predict games with Toronto Raptors and Boston Celtics. It works. Again, this says the home team Toronto Raptors are most likely to lose, since it has a winning probability of only 49.95%, which is less than 50%. Now we can move on to write code for our API. Let's follow the documentation on the Fast API website. So first, let's look at installation. We have to do pip install Fast API. We'll also need to install this Uvicorn. I won't show this, but please go ahead and install them on your computer. Then, here's an example we can follow. We need to create a Python file 
with the code below. Let's just copy this. Now instead of going back to JupyterLab, I'm going to PyCharm. PyCharm is a very easy to use Python IDE. It provides better environment and features for more complicated development. You can, of course, use your favorite Python editor. But if you don't have one, you can Google PyCharm and set up its community edition for free. You can create a project to work within. And after doing that, let's click the File menu, then New, then Python File to create a new Python file. We can just call it Main. We can then paste the fast API example we've copied here. Let's modify it based on this line by line. I don't think we need this typing optional, so let's remove it. We need to import fast API for sure. Then this is creating a fast API instance called app. Below it, there are two operations defined. We only need one, so we can just remove the second one and modify the first one to our example. So at app get here tells fast API that the function defined right below is handling the requests that go to the path here and using a get operation. The get operation is usually used to read data. It's exactly what we need. And to be more clear, we'll change this path to say predict NBA home team win. This is the last part of the URL or the endpoint of our API. We'll also change the function name below to be predict games results so it's more clear. We'll call the two inputs team home and team away. We'll ask it to return the function predict games of team home and team away. But we haven't defined this predict games function in this file. The predict games is a function we've set up in the Jupyter lab to generate the game results. So let's go back to Jupyter, copy this code, and paste it to PyCharm. We'll also reorganize the code a little to make it more clear. So let's take this import statements outside the function. And don't forget to add from job lib import load. Also, let's move the loading model code outside the function since it only needs to be run once. Now we have most of our fast API set up. Let's do a quick recap. So we've imported fast API, set up an instance called app. These are the libraries needed for generating the feature. Then we loaded the model as model saved. This function called predict games takes in two inputs, team home and team away, then goes through this whole process and returns two values, the result of the game for the home team and the probability of the home team winning. Then we set up this get operation on the app with this path. This runs the below function with two inputs of team home and team away and returns the results after applying function predict games with these inputs. So basically it returns the output of the function above, which is predict home win and predict winning probability. One last thing we need to change, we should ask the function to return a dictionary of the result for the API. So let's change it to a dictionary with key result as predict home win and key win probability as predict winning probability. And for these variables, predict home win is a NumPy integer and predict winning probability is a NumPy float. To make it work with fast API, we need to convert them to standard Python integer and float. We can simply add int to convert this result to a Python integer and add float to convert this to a Python float. So we just formatted the two results. Nothing really changed. Now we're ready to run it. Let's go to the fast API documentation. To run the server, we need this line of code. So let's copy it. Go back to PyCharm. We can click terminal here. And let's paste the code we've copied. 
So we're using the command uvacorn to run this file called main, the app called app, which we've set up, with the reload setting, so that whenever the code changes, the server restarts. Let's press enter to run it. After running, you should see some messages like this. Application startup complete. Now we should check whether the API is working properly. Going back to fast API doc, there's different methods of checking it. The easiest one is this interactive API docs. We can click the link here to go. In this page, you can see this get operation to the path we've set up. We can expand it and click to try it out. We can put an example team home and team away here. So let's try the same example. Toronto Raptors, Boston Celtics, then click Execute. You can see that here is a request URL. If we don't have this interactive doc, we'd have to type this query manually. The server response is 200, so it's a success. If you don't see this 200 code, that means there's some problems. Then you need to go back to PyCharm to fix the errors within the code. It returns the dictionary we've defined. Result as zero, so team home lose, and win probability of home team as 49.95%. So that's it. We've successfully deployed the model to production using FastAPI. Now we can send requests with team names to this API, and the API would return us the predicted game results. We can have different websites or applications request results from this API. As an example, in the next video, we'll set up an interactive web-based application utilizing this API. Stay tuned. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.